your feet and let's give a God our praise tonight. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We desire to be in your presence tonight. We ask for your will to be done. Lord, it is our heart's desire to come into your presence. Lord, with singing, with worship, with offering, Lord, and with song. Joy, Lord. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. We know, Lord, that you're in this place. And we've come to magnify you. We pray for any heart that is downhearted and broken. Any troubled soul tonight. Lord, we'd find peace in the most high tonight. And we trust you, Lord, to do your work, your mighty work. In Jesus' name. Amen. I got, a, I got a scripture, brother. Mike's got over here on his phone. I want him to read it for you. He shared it with me tonight. So uh, about 3 o'clock this morning, the Lord woke me up and he said, Psalms 32. And I was kind of like, 32 and what? 32 and what? So as soon as I got out of bed, I just grabbed that and started trying to figure out was he trying to tell me something, you know? I'm not sure if he was or not. Maybe he just thought I should get out of bed at 3 a.m. But anyways, it was the one that hit me the most out of all the, the Psalms 32 was, Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. So I think tonight if we could just be glad in the Lord and rejoice for a moment here. Can we rejoice together? Amen. Ye righteous. I believe we're called the righteous people. Yes. We come together, magnify the Lord, shout for joy. Yes. Shout for joy. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All ye that are upright in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. And tonight, I think we got plenty to be shouting for joy about. Amen. Amen. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Now, Sister Jamie had something happen today. And she's going to tell us about it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Holy Moses. I, um, <laughs> I've been listening to this song, and it's, and it's real kind of rocky. And I thought, oh, one of these days I'm going to let Sister Bolin listen to it. I think she'd really like it. But every time I listen to it, I crank it up pretty loud. <laughs> but um, I was listening to it, and it wasn't full blast. But I was... Uh, driving home and I saw this car it was all decked out had the chrome wheels and everything and they had the windows down you could tell they wanted everybody to listen to the music and it was just when I was pulling up the, you could see the license plate was <laughs> I thought oh my goodness and so when I got up up to it I mean I couldn't hardly hear my music so I cranked it up a little more and I thought okay and then I thought well he's got that thing so loud I thought you know what I'm cranking mine I went uh. and you know I thought All well way. there's no way that he can hear that and I looked over and he was looking at me and I went <laughs> and, and he went <laughs> and we just drove off and I thought well if they can crank their music That's I can right. too right. and so he's I worth. thank the Lord for that it was just he's tickled me but he had a smile and he was like oh, right. whatever you know so yeah, I praise the Lord because I want to you know I don't want to be ashamed and you know him because I don't want him to be ashamed of me and if that's the way I praise the Lord. It says, make a joyful noise unto the that's Lord. Right. That's right. And I want to praise him. And, and I thank him for the blessing he gave me. Uh, I, When I came to church on Sunday, I had a lot on my plate. And I thank the Lord that I didn't leave the way I came in. And yeah. I thank God for that. And it's been Amen. a good week. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now that was good, wasn't it? That was good. Come on, let's give this Jamie a hand. Woo! Are you ready for some church tonight? Yes. Have you come into the house of the Lord yes. with a plan to give him all the praise? Hallelujah. Well, let's, let's put it in action tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise in the house. Let's lift up the name of the Lord. Let's lift up the name of the Lord. Sing unto the Lord, for he is. 
is worthy to be praised. I will sing unto the Lord and bless his holy name. I will sing unto the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. I will sing unto the Lord and bless his holy name. You are holy, you are righteous, you are I will sing unto the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. I will sing unto the Lord and bless his holy name. I will sing unto the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. I will sing unto the Lord and bless his holy name. about I believe it was the prophet Elijah and he saw a cloud the size of a man's hand during a drought and he said can you hear the sound of abundance of rain yes. are you ready for that rain can you hear the abundance of rain Drenches every thirsty soul. Clouds are forming over the horizon, and fresh fire comes to make us whole. Can you hear the sound? Can you hear? down your blessings to this dry and weary
with us. Yes, hallelujah. Lord, we need the rain. Shower down your blessings to the dry and weary.
If you have a need and like to be prayed for tonight, I invite you to come right now. We'll anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. Sister Ruth Hoosier had to leave. She, she wasn't feeling well. And uh, we want to say a special prayer for Sister Ruth. We were able to visit with Sister uh, Paloma today. And uh, she, you know Sister Paloma, she's just always an excellent spirit. But her body is, uh, is troubling her. She has uh, a, an out of rhythm heartbeat going on. And they've tried different things and, and had fixed it back in April. But then it's done it again. So it causes her to retain fluid and all those kind of things. And it's really been a very hard trial for her physically. So we want to pray for Sister Paloma Kelly and call her name out before the Lord today. Thank you, Jesus. Any other requests tonight? Um, Tish? Sarah Calhoun. In Jesus' name, right. And Reba also asked for prayer. Uh, anyone else? All right. Yes, it does. Upper back pain. She needs, she's been trying everything, needs a healing. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? In Jesus' name, help, help, uh, Shel Shel Shelly, in Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Anybody Sister else? Sister Susie. Somebody else? Sister Susie. Sister Susie. Jaren, pray for Jaren. Let's take these, Jesus, yes, uh, Sister Jamie. Sister Keisha. In Jesus' name. That's Addie. She's needing prayer. Yes. Bucket family. Amen. Uh, Brother Junior as well. Anyone else? Pardon me? And remember Israel. That's right. I think Don told me about that before we got here. I said, I've done that the last couple of times. And there I went and forgot again. And the Bible says to pray peace for Israel. That's what the Bible instructs us to do, to pray peace for Israel. So when Amen. you pray for Israel, pray for peace. That's what we're instructed to do. Yes. Trunk or treat this weekend. We want to pray for all the contacts we're going to make. We're going to pray that we are, uh, that, that the rain is held off. Just speak to the rain in Jesus' name. Tell it to move on. Uh, also, we want to pray that everybody is in, in uh, excellent humor and we are we treat our guests with excellence in Jesus name but Andrew oh yeah Caleb's sick Caleb, Caleb Luna is sick. sick and needs prayer so we'll pray for Caleb alright let's take it to Jesus tonight
anything, Lord, you can use me. Thank you, Lord. Ezra, come help me. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Logan, pray over the offering, would you? Amen, amen. They're coming to you tonight. God bless you as you give.
Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have kids' questions. Yes. Kids' questions dismissed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. There is jubilation in the air tonight. There's jubilation. Praise the Lord. There's excitement. There's happiness. There's peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Out of the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. First Kings 18, 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, give us a direction of the Holy Ghost tonight for every heart in this place, Lord, to receive the abundance, O oh God, that you have for them. The guiding, O oh God, the anointing, the favor, the goodness, Lord. Walking, O oh God, in the directives, O oh Lord, that you would have them walk in. We ask, Lord, for your anointing in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I want to preach to you the abundance, the abundance. Praise the Lord. Turn to somebody and say, we need to be in the abundance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Quite, quite a bit happened in the book, uh, in the 18th chapter, but it starts with this very simple uh, phrase in verse 1. It says, and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Praise the Lord. It had been three and a half years since there had been rain. Uh, in Israel, and so it was. It was a. It was something to hear from God. It's time for it to rain. It's time for it to rain. But you'll you'll notice that it took forty some verses, and it took a, a miraculous event of of going to the uh, mountaintop with four hundred prophets of Baal, and that there had to be a competition, if you would. There was a statement made uh, earlier in the chapter, in verse 20. It, so it, in verse 20, it said, So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Now, we realize here that Ahab, in this chapter, that is, we find that, that Ahab had said that he was going to destroy all the prophets of Israel. And he, he had a mark out for each one of them. But, the, but his head, if you would say governor, if you would, uh, he, was, he, he had hid out, the Bible says, a hundred prophets, 50 in two caves, and had fed them with water and bread. And that was no easy task in a nation that had not had rain for three and a half years. So this man was, was uh, taking of some of the abundance that was within the kingdom, uh, within the king's house, within his ability to go out and feed the prophets that were hid out in these caves. Come out of those caves, you're going to die. That was their only course. And there was a man that God had gave for that hour, for that time, and it was important that he was there. And now he was there for, for, for uh, Elijah as well, when Elijah had to go to him. And so when it says here that Ahab gathered the children of Israel and gathered the prophets under Carmel, it wasn't the prophets of God, it was the prophets of Baal. His wife Jezebel had, had uh, aligned herself with Baal and, and worship of Baal, and all these people were being accursed of the, of the prophet of Baal. And all this, all this was going on in the nation of Israel, but there was still one that was out and about. God said to Ahab, go show yourself, un, pardon me, unto Elijah, go show yourself unto Ahab. So it was, 
It was a miraculous step. It was a bold step to step out. But with that, God had already told him, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. And, and that was echoing through his ears to hear that it's going to rain. Uh, it's going to rain. God had given him a promise. Anybody ever got a promise from the Lord? Anybody ever stood upon the promises of God when it seemed like it didn't make a lick of sense? There was, it, it, had, it hadn't rained in three and a half years. What would give him any indication, any, any inkling that it was going to rain now? Because he'd heard it from the Lord. He'd heard it from the Lord. Yes, the Lord does speak to us at times. But it is miraculous when the Lord speaks to us. And, and it, is, it is something that uh, we have to be very cautious in how we throw around, the Lord told me, the Lord said this, praise the Lord. It needs to be something that you can back up with his word, something that, that just when it, when it uh, comes to you, it, it is just miraculous in a sense. And that's like Brother Mike said, he woke up in the middle of the night, Psalm 32, and then he comes to that and reads it, and it feeds his soul. Yes, the Lord visited with him. The Lord spoke to him. It was a message from God. Hallelujah. We want to we wanna know that we know, right? Amen. The Lord's been with us. You know how you know that? When you pray. When you're someone that the Lord talks to in prayer. When the Lord is uh, commun communing with you, you know his voice. He said, my sheep know my voice. We are people of God. We hear him. We know him when we get to know him. Amen. So the Lord said to him, go show yourself to Ahab. And so Ahab gathered all the children of Israel and he gathered the prophets. In verse 21, it says, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? How long are you going to put the brakes on God? How long are you going to put brakes on your faith? How long are you going to stop putting all your, your passion, all your strength into some falseness? How long are you going to follow after a God that does not exist? How long will halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. They were speechless. How could you stand up here and say something against Baal? How can you talk about Jehovah when we've got bail. And you know, what happens so often is people get to listening to the media. People get to listening to the loud voices. People get to listening to the, the things in this world that point to what might be shiny, what might be new, what might be uh, the propaganda, if you will. I, I'm going to stick to what's lasting, what's faithful, what's, what stands the test of time. What I found to be real, true, and faithful. The Word of God. The Holy Ghost has never failed me. Amen? So Elijah said, you can, you, how long are you going to stand in this position and not believe? How long are you going to uh, not follow after the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? How, are you, how long are you not going to make him your God? It's one thing to say he's the God of my grandfather, he's the God of my dad, and he's the God of, of my uncles, but it's got to get down to his God. he's my God. He's my God. And when we begin to get that in our spirit, when we get it in our spirit, it's my God. Doesn't matter how old you are because there are people who are 75 years old that hasn't made him Lord of their life yet. There are people who are seven years old that are believing God with all their heart. My grandchildren, two years old, you can sing happy birthday. Throw a hand up and begin to praise the Lord. They begin to worship and praise God. Why? Because they feel the, the unction and the power of God. They can't speak very many words. They are, not, they are not biblically taught yet, but they know what they know. Amen? 
I've watched too many kids. You can't convince me anything else. Praise the Lord. So here we have. They, they go through the, the, this miraculous time up on the mountaintop. And, and, and the prophets of Baal, they go and they, they start their, their worship. And they do all their things. And all of a sudden... Uh, Elijah begins to make fun of him. He says, well, maybe your God's asleep. Maybe he's on vacation. And so they all of a sudden start cutting themselves and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, it, it, it's no surprise that, that today's society, we hear about kids cutting themselves. It's no surprise. The devil's been having people do that for years. You thinking about cutting yourself? Wake up. You're listening to the wrong thing. You're taking a knife to mutilate yourself in some way or form? You're listening to the wrong voice. You need to look to God. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Jamie. Turn the music up. I'm going to have to get you a woofer. Come on now. Thank you. I wish that we knew what that song was. Because um, she said it before, and I preached about the song. And uh, she said, yeah, it's that song, but I, I can't remember what it is. I, maybe Sister Jamie would sing it for me. <laughs> Just how much it... Rise up. All right. Rise up, harvest. That sounds good. Huh? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So Elijah, he said unto Ahab, get up and eat and drink. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. Not one drop had fallen yet. Now think about that. There's a sound of abundance of rain. Sound is a natural um, sense to hear, smell, taste. These are natural to see. He didn't see rain. He didn't smell rain. He didn't even hear rain because there was no drops. But his spirit heard rain. His his. His spirit had already heard from God, there's rain coming. Now, if it had been three and a half years, you'd been happy with a with the shower that settled the dust. That would have gathered just enough for everybody to have a good solid drink. So you could have a pot of something to eat. Maybe you could try to get something to grow. Maybe you get out and actually try to clean yourself. Because water's so scarce. All the rivers are drying up. The Bible told us about how he went to the, 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 uh, the river Kidron, I think it was, to, to drink. It was dry. It was dried up. So they were in a dire situation. They would have been satisfied with a shower. Are you satisfied with a shower? Are you satisfied with just a little bit? Are you satisfied with just enough? But I want you to know that God doesn't have just enough for you. He's got an abundance for you. Because when he said, I've got, he said, there is a sound of the abundance of rain. Sound of abundance of rain. Not just a shower, not just a little storm coming through. It was so much that he said, so, a so Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of a Carmel and cast himself down on the earth and put his face to his knees. All right, God, I'm going to get serious. Got down on his, on his, there, yeah, there, there. But he's, I'm going to have to have help. Oh, that's a cramp in the foot. Oh. That hurt. <laughs> We're going to have to have a maybe a com, uh, a cartoon character or something on you know, that one. There's <laughs> no illustration. Oh, man, that hurt. Woo. Okay. 
We, somebody said we have one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was funny. He cast himself down upon the earth and his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, go up now. Look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and he said, there is nothing. 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 Doesn't happen in our time, does it? Getting down on his, uh, and putting his knee, head between his knees. Now that, maybe that's desperate enough. I already got a promise. I already got a promise. Pray well. Go look. First time didn't happen. He didn't have the, um, the multiple stories that we have where, where there was seven times they went around on this last day. Seven days around Jericho. Uh, that, was, that was a story available to him, but we have it just where we heard it over and over. It's right here at our fingertips. Elijah had to believe what God had told him was true. So he says, you go seven times. And he went up there seven times, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And on seven time, he says, I see the, a cloud the size of a man's hand. Now, Elijah could have at that point said, no, okay, great, that's good. Let's keep praying. Uh, I'm believing God is going to bring us something. But he didn't. At that point, the Bible says, it says that he said to him, go, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot, get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. This is not just going to be a shower, king. You better get yourself off this mountain. You better get yourself home because there is going to be so much rain, so much water. Oh, what? You just see all the hand, a cloud size of the hand on, on the horizon. It's enough. It's enough. Sometimes when you're trusting God, just an, a word is enough to know that your promise is coming down the dusty road. Your promise is coming right away. Nothing's holding it back. Nothing's stopping it. God is about to do something in your life. When you see it, one word is all you need. When God has given you a promise, all you need is just a little bit of confirmation to start saying, watch this. Look at God. Watch God work. Can God work? Absolutely God can work. God does great things. Hallelujah. That the rain stopped thee now. Not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and he ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Oh. Ahab was in a chariot. Elijah was on foot, and he outran the chariot. Hallelujah. God can take a normal person and make the supernatural happen. God can move mountains. He said, say to that mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And don't doubt. Don't doubt. Hallelujah. And it shall be done. It shall be done. Stand with me tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. See, we're walking in abundance. We have been given the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, these things shall you do and greater. And greater. We have so much to trust the Lord in. The abundance of rain was not by evidence. The abundance of rain was by faith. The abundance of rain was by faith. So you go to your job and you say, by faith, I'm believing God for the miraculous. 
I'm believing God for the increase. I'm believing God for the job change. I'm believing God for the for the the certification, the the next step. I'm believing God for the job change. I'm believing God. Uh, you you can you can look at your kids' grades and they're and they're down hearted and blue, and you're saying, "I'm believing God for a change." Now you got to put some you got to put more than just words to it. You got to put some faith in it. And in between, when you begin to believe it and begin to see things happen, you may go through trial. You may go through the test of your life to finally get to what it takes. But God is going to bring abundance into your life when you begin to say, "My God can." My God will. Miracles. Your life can switch. And I'm not talking by your lottery ticket. That happens. There are a few people who win and multitudes who pay out. But I'm trusting one that gave me, that gave you a promise of abundance. That gave you a promise a blessing that your kids will grow up in this and they'll not walk away from it that that when you pray things will change that when you seek God your victories come amen and it may be the trials of your life but you'll be moved into positions that things change you think Daniel wanted to go to a faraway land and never see his parents again. As a young boy, he's ripped out of his home and taken all the way over to Babylon and schooled there. And they were going to make them into Babylonians. And he said, I'm not going to do that. I'm I'm not going to defile myself. I don't care that they've gave me this banquet full of bacon I'm not eating it I'm going to eat whatever I can and stay in the will of God and he did and not only did it happen but he saved all his brethren that around him and they were all fairer and more full stronger blessed victorious not just because they ate vegetables but because they kept their faith are you faithful tonight can you turn up your say oh God I believe in your abundance I believe in your blessing I'm going to walk in it I'm going to get my mind renewed tonight I'm going to get my heart right with you I'm going to walk Lord in truth and in righteousness and I'm not I'm going to have an upright heart as brother Mike brought forth tonight I'm going to have an upright heart of righteousness amen won't you make your way to this altar and make some commitments to the Lord come to the altar say I'm going to I'm going to put down uh, that phone I'm going to put down that book and I'm going to turn off that program and I'm going to trust God I'm going to bless God. I'm going to shut off some of those negative voices in my life. I'm going to raise up God in my life. I'm going to turn on my Bible and listen to it. I'm going to believe God's going to do great things. I'm going to start proclaiming some things over my family. In Jesus' name. speak it out come on come on hard worker say it about your job come on believer make it so in Jesus name in Jesus name a meeting, a trunk or tree.
name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister Nika is going to come and talk about trunk or treat. Y'all could just have, find yourself a seat. Thank you for coming tonight. God bless you. So glad to have Evans back tonight. Amen. Mike, Robin, and Jenna. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The uh, event team has worked extremely hard. Let's give them a big hand. Praise the Lord. In advance. Um, Thankful for them. Sister Nika is going to come and share with us uh, some of her visions um, for what we need to get accomplished. Would you mind to go get Kid Quest because Keisha would want to be in here. Told you all it will be a 10-minute meeting.